San Francisco, the city by the sea. Many things can be said about the city, from its uh, creative art culture to the amount of no, little to no tra parking spaces, and a few other things. I always find it quite intriguing every time I come here. This city is so great, it only begs the real question. Why haven't I done this sooner? Hey guys, how's it going? This is Magnatrex here. Welcome to a very special edition of Magnatrex Goes To. And today, as you can't tell by my intro, we are in lovely San Francisco, yes. And uh, there's a quite a lot of things to see in this town and uh, quite a lot of things to do. And I'm gonna to try to do as much as I can throughout the day before the sun sets. So without further ado, let's get started. You know, one thing I forgot to mention about San Francisco is that when you come to the city, make sure you be prepared. And by that, I do mean wear an extra thick layer jacket. Because for a city that lives literally right by the ocean, it does get really, really windy and really cold out here. Hence the reason I'm wearing two jackets underneath this shirt. And of course, my hair is not exactly perked up today because I really don't want to get all mixed up, messed up with the wind at all. And I figured what better place than any to start off this uh, video than the port of San Francisco. The piers of this city have been pretty much the backbone of this foundation. It provides a lot of fishermen bringing in the, well, fish, obviously, and other types of uh, seafood and uh, ships it off to the rest of the mainland, which they make a hefty profit, which you can tell the city has done quite well, if you ask me. <laughs> now, there are two ways we can go today. Um, as you can see right here on this map, on the right side, we go to the ever so famous, glorious San Francisco ballpark from the home of the Giants, one of my favorite baseball teams. And on your left, we also got the Fisherman's Wharf. And uh, since I'm feeling a little fishy today, I figured why not take a trip down to the wharf. But I guess out of all the piers throughout San Francisco, there's only been one that th stands throughout the test of time. And that is Pier th 39. God damn it, I screwed that up. Pier 39, pretty much a very popular tourist spot for a lot of uh, lo both locals and for out of towners. Normally it gets really busy around the Friday night to weekends. And of course, I'm in the middle of the morning, and that is why there's not a whole lot of businesses open. And behind me is the most infamous island of all, Alcatraz. Home to many famous convicts back in the 40s and 60s and whatnot until it was taken down mostly due to uh, financial issues and mostly bad weathering. But then again, what would you expect when you build a prison right in the middle of an island? I haven't been there in years. I think it was like 10, maybe 11 years to be precise. And they are closed. Sons of bitches. God damn it. And of course, no trip to the Fisherman's Wharf cannot be complete without a delicious clam cheddar with bread bowl. Now, I was gonna get one of their uh, crab sandwiches or something like that, or one of their custom-made uh, seafood sandwiches, but it turns out that those things cost about 15 to $20. No drink, no fries, nothing else, just the sandwich itself for like $15, $20. Wow. Bay Area prices. You just gotta watch out for those, for those types of people, man. They will suck those tourists dry of their money real quickly. But you know something? I'm getting a little sidetracked, and I do apologize for that. Because once you take in a lot of sites around the piers and Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, you tend to lose... The a lot of time, uh, but I'm gonna try to make up for it. One of which would be right around the corner because uh, a, a Patreon of mine requested that I should visit the Pepper Palace. Okay, so the employee inside the Pepper Palace didn't want me to take any pictures and video, you know, and take any video cameras due to personal re business reasons, but he did help, was very helpful when it came to selecting various types of sauce. He did recommend uh, something called a flashbang for 30 bucks, which is like legally the hottest sauce you can buy. 
But quite frankly, I just turned 30 today and I just don't want, and I'm not much of a risk taker like I used to be. So I bought the next, the second hottest sauce. Oruga Scorpina garlic flavor. So for 20, for roughly 20 bucks. So apparently that's a good deal. Uh, I hope, hope so. I tried some other various hot sauces that they had from regular hot to extra hot and Woo. And I do have to say, consuming a lot of those sample sauces did really take a turn for my tongue. And speaking of turn, whoa, 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 all right. Now, <laughs> look at that, we are officially on Lombard Street, or I am at least. And I will have to say, after looking over this road, and uh, despite all this talk about how great this crooked road is, it's okay for the most part. I mean, yeah, it's a little crooked, really crooked, but I don't see the point of you actually driving your car actually down here. Oh, hey there, how's it going? <sighs> but I will have to admit though, you can't argue with that view. Ah, Lombard Street is known for the one-way Russian hill between Hyde and Leavenworth streets. Was built in 1922, and was intended to reduce the hill's natural 27% grade, which was too steep for most vehicles. It is also a hazard to pedestrians who are accustomed to shallow inclines. And I do have to say that I do have to agree about that. like a little beaten path here. I never knew about this one. I always thought Lombard Street was just a one way down here. Apparently, you can go down here. Talk about walking off the beaten path. <laughs> well, now I see why so many people around this neighborhood get so frustrated because if you got so many tourists blocking up the street 24 hours a day, it can drive pretty much everybody crazy around here. And speaking of crazy, let's move on to the next location, which is... Okay, honestly, I was gonna head towards the Golden Gate Park, but instead I kind of went around an unexpected detour, and that is the Palace of Fine Arts. What the fuck? What the fuck? That is huge! It's like as if a piece of Greece and Rome just broke off and just landed right here coincidentally in San Francisco. And I have to admit, it's pretty awesome, pretty awe-inspiring. I did, however, seen this in the past, in uh, my past arounds in the, when I've been here when I was in San Francisco before, but not like this. This is actually uh, quite, quite eventful, quite, quite wonderful to say the least. It's like I fell, and it was in the center of a temple. Wait, am I in the center? Right, right, right here. Oh, I wish I could get a faraway shot of this. If I had my tripod with me, I would get a pretty good faraway shot, but there's really not a lot of good places to stand on this uh, camera. So, you just have to work with what you got sometimes. All right, so I had to take a detour real fast over at this, what they call a Golden State National Parks Conservatory, which is just a fancy word for food and gift shops. And what by that, I mean overpriced food. Do you want to know how much this costs? I paid $2.98 for this. $2.98. Wow. Fucking, I know I could reject it, but then, I had a, but then again, I had a long walk and I came all the way from Lombard Street. So, sue me. I'm thirsty. And here we are at the end of our trip, the Golden Gate Bridge, otherwise known as the most iconic monument in all of California. 
and depending on how physically active you are, it does take about anywhere from 30 minutes to maybe 45 minutes to walk to the to that bridge and back. Mostly because of how extremely long it is, but also how excruciating, but it's also quite breathtaking as well. I would normally show you like a long montage of the bridge part, but since it takes forever to film the entire thing, I might as well just show you bits and pieces of it. There have been a lot of history when it comes to this bridge, from the amount of suicides to the great view of it all. And I do have to say that it is quite the trek from one point to another, because I would have to say they're about, what, three, four miles uh, spans? And it is quite the endurance, without a doubt. So make sure you have a lot of stamina built up in you, to and back from the trip. And here we are on the other side of the landscape. What did that accomplish by walking across the bridge? Well, not really nothing much, unless of course you want to work up a good cardio and have a little bit of soreness in your feet, but that's, overall, that's pretty much it. Yeah, now it's time for me to get on back. The sun's coming down and uh, I gotta start heading back. But before I do, I need to check up on a very special convention.